The iPad Pros are beasts in every sense of the word, and now with the implementation of the M2 chip, the Pro line of iPads now transcend into the tech heavens with even more horsepower under the hood. Some may say it's overkill, and I'd like to agree at times. However, I've been more than happy using my 12.9 inch iPad Pro over the years. In some instances, it can replace your MacBook depending on what you use it for. For note taking, creating a PowerPoint, or simply watching video on YouTube, the iPad Pros are unmatched within the tablet category. But to get the full experience, Apple offers a handful of accessories that elevate your workflow on iPad Pro to more of a Mac-like experience, like with the addition of the Apple Pencil 2 and their very own first-party keyboards. The thing is, none of these accessories are by no means cheap. In terms of first-party keyboards, Apple offers two distinct keyboards that offer their own set of pros and cons for consumers. Your first-party option are the Smart Keyboard Folio or the Magic Keyboard. Plenty of customers this holiday season will be asking themselves, which is the right fit for me? Because trust me, when forking over all that money on top of the already pricey pro models, you'll definitely want to be well informed so that you don't make the wrong choice. Join me as we dissect these two very capable keyboards and at the end, I'll give you my verdict on which I prefer to pair up with my personal 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro. You ready? Let's get started. <laughs> First things first, we gotta cover pricing because it's a huge piece to this puzzle. So let's start with the Smart Keyboard Folio. It's only available in one color, that being black, and it'll run you $179 for the 11 inch Pro models and for the larger variant of the 12.9 inch, that keyboard will set you back two Benjamins, with it coming in at 199 bucks. The Magic Keyboard takes the Apple tax to an extreme, with an absurd starting price of $299 for the 11 inch model, and the 12.9 inch Magic Keyboard will set you back a whopping $349, nearly the price of a whole aluminum Apple Watch Series 8 and even the iPhone SE. You do, however, get two color options for the Magic Keyboard, that being your choice of black or white. So with such stark price differences, why on earth would one fork over all that money for a stinking keyboard? The short answer is the Apple tax, but really there's a lot more to discuss because each keyboard has certain attributes to them that may be more alluring depending on your workflow. So first, let's start with the Smart Keyboard Folio. While being the less expensive of the two, I wouldn't necessarily call this thing cheap. Its whole gimmick is that it doubles as both a folio case with equal front and back protection and also doubles as a fully fledged keyboard and can be used to prop up the iPad to two different viewing angles for while typing or even while simply consuming content like watching a movie off Hulu or Netflix. Notice though, it does not offer full body protection. As you can see, three of our four sides are exposed, so with drops from reasonable heights, such as three to four feet, you should be fine, but do be wary of those severe drops because if it happens to fall on its side, it may or may not cause your device to pick up a few dings or nicks. The stability while typing on the Smart Keyboard Folio is really exceptional while laying it flat on a table. The iPad is perfectly counterbalanced by the Smart Keyboard Folio so that casual bumps to the folio while having the iPad installed should be okay and shouldn't cause the entire iPad setup to be accidentally knocked off a table. The only thing about this is that I wouldn't exactly recommend typing on this thing while having it on your lap. It's just really cumbersome and not the best experience. But here's the thing and probably my biggest gripe I have with the Smart Keyboard Folio, the keys themselves. The keys are covered in this nylon fabric-like material which gives the user an interesting typing experience to say the least. The feel of this keyboard is very different from what you may be accustomed to such as on MacBooks. It seems to feature dome switches, the mechanism that drives these keys, versus the scissor style keys currently present on modern MacBooks. I think I can speak for most people in that the scissor style keys on current MacBooks are awesome. They're very bouncy keys with the perfect amount of travel that provides some feedback so that your fingers instantly know to strike the next key. My problem with the Smart Keyboard Folio is that that typing experience I just described is not present here. Instead, it's this weird feeling where you're unsure if you struck the key or not. Plus, because of the material, they naturally just aren't bouncy, like the plastic from the scissor style keys. 
A pro for this keyboard though is that the entire surface of it is completely sealed up, so technically it is water resistant. Now if you look though, there are some vents here at the upper right and left corners and this allows the keyboard to breathe, meaning that every time you strike a key it actually needs some air to escape to function normally. There are only two viewing angles, so it's one of those what you see is what you get kind of thing. This is useful for when having to switch from work mode, say typing a report, and then maybe watch your favorite show on Netflix. And lastly, just like the Magic Keyboard, you won't ever need to recharge the keyboard nor purchase any batteries for it because they're both driven from the battery of the iPads. You just snap it in place and it's ready to be used. In comparison, the Magic Keyboard visibly has one massive feature that's very obvious to see, a trackpad. The trackpad, unlike the ones on MacBooks, is an actual button you press. With the MacBooks, it's all an optical illusion, if you will. It has robust sensors and what Apple calls the haptic engine that mimics a physical press, but really, the button is a solid state button that actually doesn't move at all. It's just the sensors simulating that press. It's actually really neat when you think about it. Anyway, aside from that, the trackpad is of a decent size and acts very similar in nature to its Mac counterparts. It has many of the same gestures that allows you to navigate across the OS. The keyboard on the Magic Keyboard thankfully features scissor style keys. It's actually pretty much identical to the same type of experience found on MacBooks. The keys are bouncy with one millimeter of travel and we do have a backlight feature but you can't actually turn it on manually. Honestly pretty big L here, Apple really could have done a better job. So the keyboard uses the ambient light sensors from the iPad to get a gauge at the lighting scenario from your surroundings and so if there's a lot of light it won't turn it on. But as soon as the lights turn off or as the room gets darker, the keyboard lights up and only then can you adjust the brightness and settings. Here, let me demonstrate. You see, I dim the lights and the keyboard lights up. Pretty dumb if you ask me. There really should have been a way to manually turn it on or off on command. Additionally, what's weird is that we don't get a row of function keys, even though the Magic Keyboard Folio for the new 10th Gen iPad does feature a row of function keys. Yeah, go figure. So having that row of function keys would have been so useful to easily raise or lower volume, maybe turn up the brightness, maybe pull up multitasking, or simply lock the device. The design though is pretty top tier featuring that floating hinge design, but it does have minimal tilt to adjust the viewing angle. Honestly, you get a small angle of articulation you can achieve, and I would have hoped it could have been tilted more, especially for taller folks who could have benefited from a larger angle while sitting at a desk. But it doesn't end there. There also is a pass-through USB-C port for easy cable management, because I feel if you had a cable dangling off the side, I don't know, it kind of breaks the majestic design feel. So if you want to charge up while using the iPad with Magic Keyboard, you can simply attach your USB-C cable to the pass-through port and your iPad will charge as normal. Pretty cool they incorporated this into the design. And one last thing before giving you guys my verdict, I wanted to cover weight because it really is a factor here. Both add a considerable weight to the entire package and essentially doubles the thickness. This can be both a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it offers a sort of cushion in the event of drops. However, the drawback is that it only makes the load you have to carry in a bag or book bag even heavier. At least for the 12.9 inch models, the smart keyboard folio without the iPad weighs 407 grams, but then attached to the 12.9 inch and it jumps to 1048 grams for the entire package. It's only worse for the Magic Keyboard, it is a little heavier. On its own, the Magic Keyboard weighs in at 710 grams, and then attached onto the iPad, it comes in totaling 1,351 grams. That's nearly 3 pounds. So I wanted to include weight because if you happen to carry a lot of other stuff in your bag already, adding even more weight only makes your back pain even worse. And trust me, my happiest days of my youth is when my back didn't hurt. Damn, I'm getting old. So in the end, what's my verdict? If given the option to pick between the two, I definitely would give my preference to the Magic Keyboard. Yes, I understand it's a massive pill to swallow to throw down $350 for the 12.9 inch model, but you get a ton of versatility with it. 
With the Smart Keyboard Folio, you're paying $200 to have a subpar typing experience, no trackpad, no floating hinge design, and no pass-through USB-C cable. I'm simply not a fan of the fabric-like material that makes the typing experience, at least for me, pretty awful. And with future iterations of iPad OS, I think the Magic Keyboard plus the software will only improve and make the Magic Keyboard even more viable. For now though, it is a ton of money, but if you can get past that hurdle, the Magic Keyboard truly elevates the iPad into a hybrid-like device that can tackle most things a MacBook can, all while also offering Apple Pencil support. And if you want, you can easily remove the iPad from the magnets to use the iPad on its own. But I want to know what you guys think. Have you had any experiences with any of these two keyboards? If so, let me know in the comment section below. Also, stay tuned as my next upload will most likely be my iPad battery drain test. And all I gotta say is that was such a close race, you really won't want to miss it. Alright guys, clocking out for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.